Today, we're going to continue on from last week's discussion of creating our website, but delve into the media and marketing strategy we layered into it. Our website is a marketing tool, and we use media to help with that. Specifically, I'm talking about our podcast, our newsletter, and our blog, three different channels of communicating various topics related to our business. And just by having them, I think we're also passively communicating that our business is active and credible. Yes, we're also posting on social media regularly, as many of you know, but we wanted to account for our potential customers who came to our website first. So, for example, they didn't find us on Facebook or Instagram, but they came directly to our site, either through a Google search or because they had our web address in hand. These potential customers don't know that we're active on social media, so we really need to make a great first impression with our website. As I mentioned in our last podcast episode, this website is ours. It's a reflection of our business, and we want to show that we care about what that reflection conveys about our business. If your website looks outdated or like it's an afterthought, then what are potential guests going to assume about your resort? That's our reasoning behind supporting these pieces of the website. But the downside is these things take a lot of time. Writing a weekly blog, publishing a monthly newsletter, and recording a weekly podcast can seem like a lot. When we first got started, I'll admit it did seem a bit daunting. Where was I going to find the time to do anything but social media and marketing? That's probably the reason why many companies hire professionals to cover those aspects of their business. Admittedly, some of that overwhelmed feeling was on me. Uh, We didn't have to have a newsletter, a blog, and agree to host a podcast. But our website builder software did a really good job promoting them as tools we could use for our website. With one click, I could have a landing page set up for our blog and for individual blog posts. The podcast was an app I could just drag and drop into the site, and it automatically pull in episodes to a dedicated page. And the newsletter was an email marketing tool we could utilize with our website builder, which came with some cool features like integrating with our online store and building our contacts list based on people who engage with our website. So, basically, the nerd in me got hooked on all those cool features and the easy integration of those marketing tools. Thankfully, I'm starting to perfect the way we get things done each month, and it becomes less daunting with time. Once a month, I plan out our newsletter, which we send on the third Thursday of every month. We do about four or five short stories in each issue. Our blog posts are every Thursday, and most of these are actually updated versions of our newsletter stories from the prior month. This might seem like a cop-out, but we view it a little differently. Uh, For one, we know that not everyone opens our newsletter each month. We have open rates from our website software uh, of about 65%. And we get it. People are busy. They may be subscribed to our newsletter, but they won't have a chance to open and read every single issue. So from that perspective, it's okay to republish the stories. It's okay for us to republish the stories in our blog and give people a second chance to read them. Or people who aren't subscribed at all can read them as well. From the perspective of the website, the blog is the big, beautiful way to display these stories, not the newsletter archive. They're much easier to read and interact with as a blog post on our website compared to digging into old newsletter issues. So we think that adds to the reasoning behind it being okay to recycle the newsletter stories in our blog. That's how we handle the newsletter in the blog, usually taking about half a day or so to write and publish all the stories for both of them. This podcast, on the other hand, while we do schedule a little bit in advance, we like to leave room for more current happenings throughout the week. And Thankfully, Woodall's staff is great to work with uh, and only needs each episode of the podcast recorded three to four days before it's released every Monday. 
Now, although we're focusing on the website in this episode, there is definitely some overlap with social media when it comes to our blog, podcast, and newsletter. We found, like many other businesses probably, that there's an opportunity to use our podcast, blog, and newsletter for content on social media. And we found that doing so accomplishes three things for us. One, it saves us time creating separate new content for social media. Two, it helps us reach our less engaged audience, those who follow us on social media, but who don't subscribe to our newsletter, follow our blog, or listen to our podcast. And three, it actually increases engagement with those three things, pushing our social media followers in the direction of becoming more engaged with the other aspects of our website. Practically speaking, we encourage our followers to subscribe to our newsletter, and for each weekly blog and podcast, we promote them on our social media channels. We use cross-promotion, where our newsletter, for example, points to episodes of our podcast, or our blog encourages people to sign up for our newsletter. Well, we found that when everything has its own link, it's kind of easy to do these things, and it makes sense to do them uh, rather than creating all new content and helping you know, engage our, our users through all those channels. A couple of other website aspects that I'm going to group under media and marketing are our spotlight page and our press kit. Our spotlight page is a place to house links to newspaper and magazine articles telling the story of our journey. And the press kit is just a Google Drive folder with our brand guide, company fact sheet, and some photos of our family for use in publications. Now, I'm, I'm fully aware that the New York Times and Wall Street Journal aren't blowing up our phones and our email inbox asking for interviews, but like the blog, and the newsletter, we wanted to have these two features to convey credibility. We're thankful for our local newspaper journalists and publications like Woodall's Campground Magazine and Glamping Business Americas, who have helped increase our brand's awareness through their stories covering mitten getaways. We wanted to have a place to put these stories on display, hence the spotlight page that we created on our website and some other uh, websites might call it in the news or, or press. Uh, we just chose to call it our spotlight page. And the press kit was super easy to set up, so we thought, why not do it? Besides using these aspects of our website to appear current and credible, we also very much wanted to use them to convey a personal touch and build relationships with people following our journey. We think most would agree that our journey is unusual, um, interesting, and, and challenging. And not only do we hope that it's helpful and entertaining for everyone, uh, we also think it will be that much more exciting when we finally open our resort. And that is our show for today. If you do get a chance to peruse our website, we are happy to hear your feedback. You can share that feedback with us, as well as ideas for future podcast episodes at mittengetaways.com slash reach out, or by emailing us at glampers at mittengetaways.com. The Mitten Minute, Our Glamping Journey, is produced by Woodall's Campground Magazine and is sponsored by Outdoor Alliances. You can check out all episodes of the Mitten Minute podcast at mittengetaways.com slash minute. Follow our journey in other ways at mittengetaways.com slash subscribe. Some of the ways we talked about in this episode, as a matter of fact. So thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week.